Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoben's Nest. Today I am participating in a Use Your Stash Challenge hosted by Say La Vie Dawn, Crafty Kitty, and Thelma Hall. If you have not checked out these ladies' channels, please go ahead and do so. They do all sorts of crafting, hauls, and thrifting. Their channels are below in the description box along with the playlist link. The ladies asked us to use our stash to create something whatever we wanted, home decor, journals, anything that we could think of. So I've had this bamboo cutting board that's in the style of a book for a couple of years now. It's just been in my wood closet and I thought it was finally time to break it out and do something with it. So I'm going to make it over to look a little bit like a vintage book. The first thing I'm doing is just putting on some painter's tape because I want to separate the two colors that I'm going to be painting this. The first color I'm going to use is Coastal Blue by Rust-Oleum. It is a chalk paint. And I'm going to paint the darker blue on the side of the book that is the binding. So I want to mimic what a regular hardcover book would look like without the jacket on it. I'm using a tiny little paintbrush to get into the little grooves and corners of the side of the book. The next color I'm using is also from Rust-Oleum and it is their Serenity Blue. It's very similar to Duck Egg Blue from Annie Sloan and I'm going to use that to paint the bigger portion of the book. Altogether, I'm doing two coats of both the blue colors and making sure that they dry nicely before I move on to my next step. Here I am removing the painter's tape and this is going to reveal the color of the book underneath the brown and I'm going to be able to do some embellishments with that later on so I really love the way it's starting to come together. Here I'm on my computer and I've gone into the internet into the images for the search words gothic letter O. I want to use a large O for the words once upon a time that I want to put on top of the book. So I'm going to find a printable letter O and then I've just saved it to my computer. If you can't save it, you could always use a little snippet tool or uh, take a screenshot and then crop out the uh, letter and then save it onto your computer. Here I've opened up Microsoft Word and I'm going to go to the insert menu and click on picture so I can import that letter that I just saved. It comes in really big so I'm just going to go to the corners and grab those little handles and make it smaller. The next thing I'm going to do is finish the phrase once upon a time and I'm using the font Harrington and the size is 72. I'm going to change the parts that were capitalized into lowercase letters because I want them to be the same. Then I'm going to select all the letters and put them centered onto the page. Next I'm going to print off the paper and when I get back to my desk I'm going to flip it over and use a pencil to shade in fairly darkly on the back side where all the letters are and you can see on my piece of paper that I've got pencil shading on the back of it. Then I'm going to flip it over to the right side, place it on my book and then use a pencil with some really firm pressure and I'm going to outline all of the letters and then I'll be able to fill them in because the pencil rubbings on the back of the sheet of paper will make a, an outline or sort of like a stencil of the letters and I'll be able to see where they are so I can fill them in. I'm going to outline the letters and color them in with my Craft Smart oil based paint pen. It's in black and I'm using the fine tip. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace the outline of the letters and then fill them in. 
these paint pens can be a little finicky sometimes. If you press too hard, then you get more of a permanent marker kind of effect. But what you want to do is push the nib down on a piece of paper and get some of that ink flowing. So you can, or sorry, with some of the paint flowing. So it comes out a lot smoother and you don't have to use a lot of pressure. Here's the finished lettering and I just added three little dots at the end of it because then that means that a story is coming. And what I'm going to do now is just take a ruler and I'm going to just outline where the paint meets the brown part of the book. This will give the paint edges more of a finished look. I was really loving how this book was coming together, but I felt that it needed a little bit of embellishment in the brown area. So I'm just doing some sort of wiggly brackets and some circles at the end of the brackets. It kind of looks like leaves, but not quite sure. I just thought up this design in my head and put it to work and it seemed to work out fine. I really like how it turned out. I like this effect, but I still wanted to add a little bit more. So what I'm doing is just adding three little dots to the end of each line. And then I'm going to also add some dots in between each of the leaves. The last thing is to use some of Annie Sloan chalk paint in the color original, which is their old white. And I'm going to just paint in where the book pages would be. I think this book would look great in a library or maybe in a book nook or in a nursery in the book area. You could even hang it on the wall. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share my videos. I'd like to give a shout out to Say La Vie Dawn, Crafty Kitty, and Thelma Hall for hosting this challenge. See you in the next one.